بسم الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد 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 اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما اغلق الخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله وصحبه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله اللهم صل وبارك وسلم وبارك عليه يا رب العالمين ان شاء الله we will uh, get started momentarily باذن الله تعالى uh, just waiting for I think some people who are probably still praying Maghrib here on the East Coast I want to give them a few minutes, a moment to join us insha'Allah ta'ala So we will await that and uh, we can not forget that Alhamdulillah for those of you who have prayed Maghrib Now we've entered into the uh, latter part, uh, the beginning of Jumu'ah The beginning of the day of Jumu'ah And this is the eve of Jumu'ah And this is a time of dhikr, a time of fikr a time of uh, remembrance, a time of uh, thought and contemplation, a time to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, we come to this space intending ta'ala, by His generosity and His grace to connect with Him and to be intimately intertwined with the spirit of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and the haqiqah and the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. That's really why we gather as Muslimin. Uh, we gather um, to take advantage of the sacred moments, to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek His grace and His rahman, His mercy and His acceptance, and to be nourished and to be illuminated and to be increased by the sacred and beautiful guidance of ad al-Islami. Alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah. We thank Allah for these gatherings. We thank Allah for Islam. We thank Allah for the Qur'an. We thank Allah for... Hidayah, we thank Allah for the guidance, we thank Allah for the month of Sha'ban, we thank Allah for the, the month of Ramadan, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yubalighana Ramadan, Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan ya Rabbil Alameen. We must never lose sight of this musim that we are in, this, uh, this season uh, of, of spiritual joy. You know, there's a there 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 is in the world today. You know, these seasons of joy, um, usually around materialistic things. But for the believers, Alhamdulillah, their seasons of joy are the seasons where one can attain a qurba, uh, a closeness to Allah that is distinct and unique. And of course, there is nothing in the life of the believer in that regard that is more that parallels the reality of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah not deprive us of the month of Ramadan. And may Allah make it that all of us, our hearts and minds and bodies are ready and, and, and primed and, and excited for the, the blessed month of Ramadan. Say Allahumma ameen. Even if you find your heart skeptical <laughs> and maybe you, know, you maybe have a little bit of a knot in your throat, but you say it, inshallah, billahi wa ma'allah. Through these divine iterations, we seek Allah's aid and support to bring us into a space of readiness. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So inshallah, with that, let us begin um, reflecting on the 51st hikmah, wisdom of Ibn Ata'illah, uh, secondary, نَفَعَنَ اللَّهُ بِعُلُومِهِ فِي الدَّارَيْنِ Amin. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. We ask Allah to purify our intentions and to put place on our hearts and our tongues that which is pleasing to Him and make this gathering a gathering that is accepting, uh, accepted by Him and accepting to Him and loved by Him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Yaqulu ibn Ata'illah secondary rahimahullah wa nafa'ana Allahu bi'ulumihi fi daraini ameen la amala arja lil qulubi min amalin yaghibu anka shuhuduhu 
ويحتقر عندك وجوده لا عمل أرجى لا عمل أرجى للقلوب من عمل يغيب عنك شهوده ويحتقر ويحتقر عندك وجوده Ibn Atallah is saying that there is no deed no deed is more fruitful for the heart than the one you are not aware of and which is deemed paltry by you he is saying here that there is no deed or act that is done la amala arja lil qulub that uh, that is better for the heart from an action yaghibu anka shuhuduhu that you do not uh, its presence is not prevalent in your heart and mind you don't look and see and observe this action it's an action that is done and you don't sit there uh, observing the action وَيُحْتَقَرُ عِنْدَكَ وُجُودُهُ And even its presence, this action, and this action being a virtuous action or a virtuous deed, is even مُحْتَقَر عندك. It's it's belittled, it's paltry in your sight. Now Ibn Atayullah is giving us an insight about the nature of, uh, of what our actions and our acts in this world actually mean. And all of these commands that we have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray and to fast and to make dhikr and recite the Qur'an and give sadaqah, all of these actions, what is their haqiqah? What is their reality with regards to our existential well-being? Because he's saying, لا عمل أرجى للقلوب That there are no actions that we may act upon that are better and, and, and fruitful for the heart than actions that we do not witness or observe. So we do them, but we don't see them, you know. And, and, and when we do them, uh, you know, we, we, we don't look at them as being substantial or significant. This is a, a type of spiritual disposition that requires some, some serious contemplation and consideration. I want to read to you first a little bit from the Sharh of Sheikh al-Sharnubi, what he says, you know, about this wisdom, and then we'll have much to say, inshallah. So he says here, أي لا عمل من أعمال البر أكثر رجاء للقلوب أي لإصلاحها. So he says that there is no action from virtuous acts that is more begetting of or virtuous or fruitful for the heart, a li islah al qalb to rectifying the state of the heart, min amalin yaribu anka shuhuduhu that from an act that you do not witness, you do not see. And there's also some nusakh, some uh, of those who've you know written down these hikam, they say that uh, some some versions say qab. قلوب, and some virgins say قبول. So أي لا عمل أرجى للقبول قبول meaning acceptance so that there is no deed that is uh, more hopeful for acceptance by Allah سبحانه وتعالى أي لا عمل أرجى للقبول عند الله and So both قلوب and قبول they both work in this context so if there is an action that you really hope is going to be accepted by Allah, it's the one that you don't uh, observe so pre prevalently or presently. Similarly, that there is no deed that is more fruitful for the qalb, for the heart, than the one you do not observe or witness so presently. So both of these ma'ani um, are very significant because we're talking about the state of the heart and the state of Allah's acceptance of our actions. And if you recall from the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah does not look at your external forms and your acts. Allah looks at your, your heart. Right? So, he says, لِأَنَّكَ إِنْ غِبْتَ عَنْ شُهُودِ عَمَلِكَ For if you 
do if you are uh, absent from witnessing your your actions or your deeds the good deeds that you're doing فقد بقيت حين إذن بربك then when 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 the actions are not present in your psyche in your purview then it's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وصار وجود العمل محتقرا عندك and that these these virtuous deeds that you've done they they are of no value in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so i don't do a virtuous deed or a good deed and think oh mashallah you know i did this amazing thing i i pray tarawih or i read quran or you know uh, uh, you know which are objectively virtuous things to do but we'll get to trying to synthesize the idea of doing a good deed without reveling in your good deed right because there is there's a type of real deficiency that may afflict us that if we do good things and then we really revel in it and we're absorbed in our good deeds and we focus and we say oh mashallah look at my dress look at my practice look at my behavior look how all these things that i do and i be i develop this false sense of superiority or this for, false sense of safety that i'm good you know i'm good i do good alhamdulillah i'm, I'm fine that's where our actions become very questionable in our spiritual life in terms of the state of our heart قلوب, or قبول, or what is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لِتِهَامِكَ لِنَفْسِكَ فِي الْقِيَامِ بِحَقِّهِ see the, the 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 individual who does not witness their actions and finds them to be small in the presence of Allah this is because these are the types of people يَتَّهِمُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ they 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 question and challenge themselves in that have they truly fulfilled haqqullah cuz this is the real issue here that we have to think about these virtuous uh, actions that we do these a'malul birr are they done in a way that in, in any way shape or form fulfill the rights of allah the huquq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not meaning what value does an act of prayer really have you know in the absolute sense with regards to what allah is owed hmm? that this this is the real question because the, the 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 servant of allah the one who's living in loving surrender really questions and challenges him or herself to think you know am i doing even remotely you know an ounce of what allah is deserving of me so the 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 the, the salik the seeker of allah does not look at his or her actions and think like oh mashallah look at all this beautiful these beautiful good deeds that i've done you know you know i i i don't mind if i do let me pat myself on the back here because look at all that i've done no the salik says oh subhanallah this is not this is nothing this is nothing this is nothing what this is nothing in terms of what allah is owed you know my 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 waking up in the in the night to pray to hajjud or reading quran or fasting or or teaching or helping or serving or or giving charity or or giving millions and millions of dollars of charity that in the salik this is belittled with the seeker because this is not even remotely what allah is owed or this doesn't even register in the scale of haqqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِذَا قَالَ بَعْضُ الْعَارِفِينَ And that's why some of the Gnostics, they have said, كُلُّ شَيْءٍ مِنْ أَفَعَالِكَ إِذَا اتَّصَلَتْ بِهِ رُؤْيَتُكَ فَذَلِكَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ لَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْكَ That any action, virtuous action that is done, and 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 اتَّصَلَتْ بِهِ رُؤْيَتُكَ That your sight kind of really connected with that action. <laughs> so it's a very observant of that action then that is a potential sign of that act, no matter how virtuous it may be, not being accepted. This is what some of the Arifin, uh, the Gnostics, have said about uh, you know, how the grade of or the quality or the value of that act, if I'm so, you know, if I'm so uh, uh, witnessing of it, if I if I if I look at it and I really observe it and see it. مَرْفُوعٌ مَغِيبٌ عَنْكَ For that which is truly accepted is مَرْفُوعٌ 
is lifted and is hidden from your sight وَمَنْ قَطَعَتْ عَنْهُ رُؤْيَتُكَ فَذَلِكَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى الْقَبُولِ and that which is you know in قطع عنه رؤيتك that your sight has been cut from seeing it and that is an, a dalil an indication of of acceptance so brothers and sisters this because this becomes you know a very critical spiritual and theological concept especially when ibn ata'illah is illustrating this whole concept of la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah that there is no uh hawl no recourse and no quwwah no power and no might except and by through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is the truth and Allah is the essence and so these actions their true existential value for the believer is put in question it's not in any way shape or form to say that salah is a is an insignificant act a'udhu billah no لِأَنَّهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِاللَّهِ because the act of salah is attached to Allah for salah has a an absolutely grandiose standing. The same thing goes with sadaqa and dhikr and recitation of the Quran and so on. These are magnificent acts. Billahi wa ma'allah, thalika wa ma'yu'avdhim sha'air Allah. You know, these, these sacred rites and rituals, these are the sha'air of Allah that nahnu nu'avdhimuha. We, we truly do honor them and we feel a, 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 a presence or a, a disposition of, of distinction that we're even able to be allowed to pray. So that's the, the believer is someone who views him or herself as, you know, being so humbled by Allah that you would, Ya Allah, you would even let me enter, enter into the door of salah. It's a very different, you know, spiritual and even psychological disposition to have. You know, it's, it's, it's not, because when you juxtapose it against, for example, all right, yeah, fine. Allahu Akbar. You know, oh my God. All right, I gotta get up and pray. All right, whatever. All right, just let me just get this over. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulill it hasn't resonated. It hasn't entered into that theological framing that says, like Allahu Akbar, this is a salah, a silatu billah. This is my this is my potential connection to Allah. This is what was gifted to the Prophet. So when I enter into salah, I'm entering into this realm that is unparalleled. And so then Ya Allah, you're gonna allow me to enter into this space of prayer. أَقْرَبُ مَا يُكُونُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَى رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest that you can be to Allah is when you're in a state of prostration, you know, in, in, in sujood. And so you feel this overwhelming sense of honor. وَأَنْتَ تُشْهِدُ يعني You witness Allah. Your shuhud is, I witness Allah, I see Allah. Not that, oh, bismillah, mashallah, look at me, I have prayed, <laughs> you know. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, bismillah. You know, and there's this <laughs> sense of, because it's that, that disposition where the person is witnessing his or her virtuous acts or deeds, that's a self-centered, it's, it's me witnessing my act versus the prayer that's done witnessing Allah, okay? Meaning that, you know, I, I have a humility in my prayer that, you know, subhanAllah, am, am, I, am I really doing this? Am I, am I being allowed to pray? Allahu Akbar. You know, and and pray to Allah. Allah is allowing me this entrance into His 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 divine assembly and court. You know, imagine Of course, if 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 a person, a king or someone of high uh, status, invites you into their personal space, their court. You know, the gates are opened. You enter into that space. You know. Uh, not boasting about your own disposition. It's really, oh my, you know, that the king is right there, or whatever, this very critical, important person is right there. You know, when you're entering into the space of acts of worship that are attached to the divine, you're witnessing the divine, you're not observing the act. Now the act is a sabab, it's an essential mean amongst the means that is taken by Allah to tell us, this is how I want you to act. So we, we surrender lovingly and we enter into salah for the spiritual uh, opportunities and the theological 
fortification that can happen in the life of the believer by entering into these acts and surrendering to Allah and connecting where we seek by our prayers and our dhikr and our qura'ah of the Qur'an and our du'a taqarrub ila Allah, closeness to Allah honoring, humbling ourselves, bowing ourselves in front of Allah that's the haqiqah of our actions our actions don't become this thing that we leverage for our nafs it's like, well, you know, look at me I pray all the time I fast all the time. You know, people come to me sometimes. And I, and listen, I'm not, I know, Wallahi, people, they say these things, you know, innocently. They, people don't say these things, uh, you know, with, with, with ego necessarily. But I want to, we have to correct some of these, these things that we say because we say them very often. So one of the things that's constantly said is the idea of, you know, why, why would Allah do this to me when I pray? And I fast, you know, why would Allah let my child be that way when I, uh, you know, I pray five times a day. I don't miss any sunnah. I wake up every every day before Fajr and I, I read Quran and I pray to Hajj. Like, why would Allah do this to me? Ah, this is where we have to pause and think, okay, what do you think your actions actually mean? What value are you placing on your actions unknowingly or or in a faulty fashion? So that you're basically going to Allah and saying, here, look, Ya Allah, look at all this I've done. Look, look at this whole file you know, of deeds. You know, what? And you're not going to like take this and, and, you know, this is ridiculous. It's like walking into the, you know, Maktab al-Tawallumat or something, walking in and, 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 you know, talking about your grievances in front of uh, a judge and saying like, look at everything that I've done. And what, you're not going to give me what I want? You're not going to get me married? You're not going to give me a kid? You're going to not let my child be the way I want them to be? You're not going to let my spouse be what they be? You're not going to give me that job? Why are you doing this to me? Look at all this stuff. See, that's a misunderstanding of the haqiqah of what those actions actually mean. Those actions are meant to be purely acts of surrender to Allah. So it's your, your constant witnessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet said he teaches us dua and he taught this to Sayyidina Mu'adh after prayer. And he said they gave it to him as a gift. He says, Allahumma a'inni. Oh Allah, aid me. A'inni ala dhikrika. Aid me to remember you ala shukrika and to thank you. Wa husni ibadatika. And aid me to, to, to make muhsin, make excellent and beautiful my acts of worship. And never make me amongst those who are heedless of you, Ya Allah. So this dua it epitomizes this idea of Allah ala dhikrik. Oh Allah, aid me and help me to remember you. Remember you only, not remember my actions. Remember you. ala shukrika and, and help me, Allah, to thank you. You know, all of this is centered around Allah, remembering Allah, thanking Allah. And to make excellent and beautiful my, my acts of worship for you, Ya Allah. So that when I do them, they are maqbulun indak. They are accepted by you. And you love them. And you are pleased with them. Not that I'm pleased with them. Because who am I? I'm a beggar. <laughs> you know, I'm a miskeen. I have nothing. Ana bida'ati muzja. You know, my, my bida'a, my... What I actually have as a commodity is 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 all rotten. It's nothing. So, meaning, what does an act of worship mean in reality with regards to the magnificence and the grandioseness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Nothing. Not that not a'udhu billah. We're not saying that salah is worth the stuff for Allah. Or that, no 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 no. We're saying that yes, it is action. It does not present itself in the divine court as. Bismillah, mashallah, you know, yes, you have acted. No, this is a humble, humble offering from a simple servant saying, Ya Allah, Allahumma taqabbal minni, Ya Allah, taqabbal wa li And I know, Ya Allah, this is this is nothing of what you are truly owed, but uh, yani, this is taqabbal minni, and please forgive me. Wallahi, I've, I've, mis I've done a lot of faulty things, and I've been mistaken, and I was... You know, off the mark here and there, but the, it's a very humble disposition in that divine reality. And this is what Ibn Ata'illah is 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 exciting within our hearts and minds. He's really trying to generate a disposition that becomes immersed in the idea of the oneness of Allah and a truly theocentric, Allah-centric orientation. 
in divesting ourselves from that reality. That's why the epitome of ihsan and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah that you worship Allah as if you only see Allah. That's the epitome of excellence and beauty of ihsan. Ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah. You witness and see Allah. So you're no longer, you know, you know, putting your actions in a file and presenting them to Allah. Like, how come? And how come? And, and look at me. And, and a'udhu billah, the, the people who then use their actions or their righteous acts as a type of leverage over people. You know, so there's one thing to go to Allah, which is very blameworthy, and say, Ya Allah, take this file of actions and give me what I want already, right? There, there's a very self-centered, you know, uh, demanding, arrogant disposition that is attached to that. But there is another degree of, of real ugliness when someone takes their acts of, you know, so they, they pray and they fast and they, they dress, you know, uh, according to the sharia and they do all the things that are externally uh, visibly, you know, identifiable as someone who's a, who's a practicing Muslim. And then they use that, you know, to, to belittle others and to dismiss, dismiss others and to castigate others and to position themselves above others. A'udhu billah, you know, this is to, to ever view oneself as being above others because they do these acts of worship and so therefore they are inherently better. La, la abadan, abadan, absolutely not. This is from the most dangerous of dispositions to ever have. You think Allah will be pleased with His servants walking around like a bunch of egomaniacal, arrogant beings, you know, showing off their uh, uh, their practice and holding it above others and dismissing and belittling others, is that was that ever the way of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in any of our readings of the seerah or the hadith or the shama'il of the Prophet sallallahu Hasha sallallahu alaihi wasallam? He was beautifully humble. Mustakin mutawadi, khadi alillahi, rahim, rahma, you know, merciful with people, gentle, kind, humble, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, where is this, 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 this disposition that comes where people elevate themselves above, you know, egotistically? This is, may Allah protect us from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So, what are some of the verses that we can reflect on that fortify? This meaning that Ibn Atallah is illustrating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Mu'minun, verse uh, number 60. Surah Al Mu'minun, verse number 60. Those who always give, they give and they do and they act. So they do their acts of virtue with hearts that tremble. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةً Their hearts tremble at the thought that they must return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you see the spiritual and theological framing that this verse does? It's the, this is how we should aspire to act. Okay, This is really an ayah that re refines for us the idea of, okay, how then do I act? Because that's a question that we're all going to pose right now. Well, الَّذِينَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا they they give what they give and what they do with hearts now. Wajila, you know, concerned, you know, trembling at the thought. We're going back to Allah. We're going to stand on the day of judgment. We're going to be held accountable. Have I done and have I existed and have I been both inwardly and outwardly in any way, shape or form that truly represents what Allah is due from me as his servant, this is something that should not debilitate us, but should inspire us to be humble, number one, and then to do what we can, as much as we can, as we can, you know, extensively. Like, ya Allah, I'll, I'll do whatever I can. I'll give charity. I'll be good to those around me. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll pray my prayers. I'll pray my sunnah. I'll, I'll try, Ya Allah. I'm going to work really hard. But not this disposition that is, once again, self-centered, slightly arrogant and that says like you know fine whatever i'll do it you know just accept it already i've done that i prayed i did my hajj once you know i did my hajj that should be more than enough 
I'm good. <laughs> you know, I'm good. I'm the I prayed on the night of the 27th. I'm fine. I'm not castigating those people, by the way, who, who have that mindset. Now, this is a time to correct our understanding of what our true relationship with Allah should be. It shouldn't be one where I am here and Allah is there. And I feel like this social, uh, even religious pressure to do something that is, you know, emblematic of religious practice. So I do it and I say, okay, fine. Like, accept that, <laughs> you know, take that. There you go. Let me go back and live my life. No, brothers and sisters, we're too insignificant in the haqiqa of this creation to ever dispose ourselves in that way, to ever be positioned in such a dismissive arrogant way assuming that you know when we're doing an act of worship that somehow we're doing something of true virtue something that is deserving of recognition you know uh it's it's not it's just simply not something that is deserving of recognition is is a disposition that is truly truly utterly humble and working as hard as they possibly can to do what is pleasing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to be distant from Allah, disconnected, oblivious, almost having apathy of Allah, and then doing things here and there, you know. I'm not saying people should stop that, should stop doing those here and there things, but what I'm saying is don't assume that somehow I am good or I have fulfilled my duty or I you know this is this was you know you know katir <laughs> aleko as the egyptians would say i mean this is me really going out of my way to do this thing that you guys want of me or that Allah what you want of me or whatever this is the the, the thought process that ibn atayla is helping us to rectify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-maida verse 27 watlu alayhim naba abnay adama bil haqq إذ قرب قربانا فتقبل من أحدهما ولم يتقبل من الآخر قال لا أقتلنك قال إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in in this translation now tell them the truth about the story of Adam's two sons. Each of them offered a sacrifice, and it was accepted from one and not the other. One said. I will kill you. But the other said, what did the other say? You know, <laughs> he said, uh, Habil said, God only accepts the sacrifice of those who are mindful of him. In Nama, and this is the operative part of, of the verse, in Nama yataqabbalu Allahu min al muttaqin. Allah accepts from those who are conscious of him. So you're, you know, what this initial incident between Qabil and Habil, Cain and Abel, represents to us is Cain now is in his rage or his anger and his envy and his bother and his rejection and all of those dispositions that he had towards his brother and towards, you know, Allah in that moment, and then choosing in a, in a moment of self-centeredness to kill his brother. Habil is saying to him, listen, you have to understand something is that Allah accepts actions, this act that you're going to sacrifice me now. <laughs> Allah only accepts actions of those who are mindful of Him. So is the, is the reality of your action one that centers the divine reality or not? That's the critical question. And this is a very big question for all of us today. You know, really, when we go out and we choose to have a career, we choose to you know, pursue an educational pursuit. We choose to marry particular people. We choose to be engaged in all sorts of social or political activities. We choose to enter into certain different industries, uh, public life, private life, all these different you know, pursuits. Allah accepts from those who are truly conscious of him. So the question then now impresses itself upon me is, have I truly pursued this path of being in the public sphere, of being active in social media, of going down this career path, of choosing this educational pursuit, of marrying this person, of buying these belongings, of having this space or whatever, all these things. Am I conscious of Allah or not? Because see, we can spend all day and all night convincing each other of the virtue of what we're doing you know and we can argue 
to uh, until we're blue in the face to justify our actions. And we can talk endlessly uh, about how what I'm doing is the virtuous cause. And you guys over there, you're, you know, just these, in, in, you know, uh, useless beings. But I am, I am doing what needs to be done. I am doing something sophisticated. I'm doing something important with my life. You know, I'm pursuing a career that's really sophisticated. I'm going to be somebody, you know. There's language that has become so dominant in our public sphere about our actions and our pursuits that I really want us to challenge and question. Is Allah or is Allah consciousness, is God consciousness truly present in those pursuits? And I'm not talking, and, I, and please bear with me for, with this one, I'm not talking about I go and I do whatever I want. I pursue whatever I want. And then I say, yeah, 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 I'm doing it for the sake of Allah. All right, go back to what I'm doing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, you know, consciousness is not paying lip service to Allah. We can't. Yes, we're not gonna, we're not here to, you know, to, to, to play around with each other. And certainly not to play around with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a serious business. This is life and death. This is salvation. This is, you know, existential in nature. Taqwa is a real present concept that's present not only inwardly, but it's present outwardly. Submission is an inward and an outward reality. The haqiqah of, of, of living in loving surrender to Allah is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. It's outward, inward, and it's holistic. And that's what, that's what the essence of taqwa is. إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah make us from the muttaqin. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verses 10, I want to read to you verses 10, 11, 12, and 13 of Surah Fatir. Really, this Quran is just replete with gems and gifts. And I, I really pray that we develop an intimate relationship with the Book of Allah. Because when you immerse yourself in it, Allah, Allah you know, reveals, He shows you truths and realities. And when you explore them as if you're exploring a garden, that is full of beautiful vegetation and trees, and you go and you look at each one and you see how unique they are and, and how it affects your spirit and your soul and your perception of reality, you just become moved and, in, and, and ingratiated in a spiritual way that is unparalleled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 10 of Surah Fatir, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ وَالَّذِينَ يَنْكُرُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَكْرُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُوَ يَبُورٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If anyone desires izza, dignity and honor, all dignity and all honor belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good words, الْكَلِمُ tayyib rise up to him. And he lifts up the righteous deeds. But a severe torment awaits those who plot evil and their plotting will come to nothing. See, Allah is giving us uh, an evident truth about existence. Listen, any of you out there, any of us, seeking dignity, honor, affirmation, recognition, all of that, all of it belongs to Allah. None of us, you know, this whole public you know, uh, 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 obsession with being affirmed and recognized and validated. La, la, la. These things do not happen by social. Uh, society does not validate us, does not recognize us, not affirm us. Allah does. What? Man kana yuridu al-izzata, falillahi al-izzatu jamia. That's just an absolute truth. All of it belongs to Allah. Any dignity or honor that you, your children, your family members, your friends, your our community seeks, kulluhu ma'Allah. All of it is with Allah. Ilayhi, to Him, yasadu al-kalimu tayyib. All the good words, the good meanings, the good ideas, the virtuous expressions, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, rise up to Him. Wal-amalu salihu yarfa'uhu, and Righteous deeds are Allah lifts them up to him. Now see the beauty of the Quranic language, this is just a quick aside, is that this verse can be actually read, this part of the verse can be read in three ways. So number one, 
إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه meaning that to him good words rise up okay to him and he lifts up the righteous deeds this is one way to read it another way to read it is إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه يرفع أي الكلم الطيب meaning that to him Allah rise up the good words and the good deeds the righteous deeds they lift these righteous words so meaning that good words are that they 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 have the potential to rise up to Allah and it is the good deeds that rise that 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 make these good deeds actually go up يرفعه. so that's the second way to read it meaning to say what the scholars have elucidated from the second meaning is that you can't just say without doing because your the haqiqa of your kalimu tayyib which is the essentially la ilaha illallah and everything that has to do with that the only way it really goes up and is validated and affirmed is through the actions and the deeds that reflect that that's why al iman you know the scholars have said al iman ma you know ma waqara fil qalbi wa saddaqahu al amal it is that which is uttered on the tongue settles in the heart and then the actions you know verify that this is the truth so al ilm wa al amal you know knowledge and action words and action you know you can't كبر مقتا عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعلون أو how evil it is in the sight of Allah that you تقول ما لا تفعلون that you say what you do not do so the you know these being you know in intimate relationship in the space of worship the third way to read this verse إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه meaning that العم إليه you know العمل الصالح goes up and al-kalimu tayyib is actually what lifts it up so you do good deeds but then it is your your good words that actually lift your actions up so those three meanings are actually encompassed here the scholars they kind of default to the first meaning which is that good words rise up to allah and he lifts up the righteous deeds okay but regardless of all three meanings here is really essentializing the idea that all dignity belongs to allah and our words, our utterances, our beliefs, and our actions are all things that are lifted up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for them to be lifted up, they have to be tayyib and they have to be salih. They have to be good and they have to be righteous. And they have to essentialize that a, a, a heart and a soul, a spiritual disposition that knows al-izzatu Allah, Dignity is with Allah. Honor is with Allah. So I seek you, ya Allah. Allah then says in verse number 11, uh, number 11, Wallahu khalaqakum. So now, after kind of laying out the framing around dignity and honor and all these words and actions and beliefs that you do in life, right? And then those who who incline towards these pathways other than Allah, lahum adhabun shadeed. Allah's torment will be exacted upon them. yabur. And they're all their plotting and their planning and all these actions that they do, you know, will 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 come to nothing. Will be are, are worthless. Wallahu khalaqakum. So now these next three verses, they really do affirm who we are, you know, and what we are vis-a-vis -vis who Allah is. Wallahu khalaqakum min turab, thumma min nutufa, thumma ja'alakum azwaja, wa ma tahmilu min untha, wa la tada'u illa bi'ilmih. وَمَا يُعَمَّرُ مِنْ مُعَمَّرٍ وَلَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْ عُمُرِهِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ It is God who created you from dust and later from a drop of fluid. Then he made you into two sexes. No female conceives or gives birth without his knowledge. No person grows old or has his life cut short except in accordance with a record. All this is easy for Allah. So this is the entire life cycle of the human being. You know, Allah is telling you, listen, your whole life cycle, from, from the dust to the drop of fluid, 
to the genders, to your uh, uh, being conceived, being birthed, uh, growing old, you know, losing your life. All of that is muqaddar Allah, and this is easy for him. So why is this important? Because what happens to the human being is, and what happened to Qabil and what happened to Satan and what happened to so many people is they develop this exaggerated sense of self. No, oh, I'm important. I'm going. I am. Look at me. Center me. The world revolves around me in my home, in my family, in my community. I have to be the center of the world. Everything has to be revolving around me. I'm the best one who can do. I can accomplish X, I, 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 I. So then these delusions of grandeur make it where you begin to yourself compete with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, 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 in his kibriya, hasha jalla fi that, that even someone can claim to try. But that, you know, I, ana, and Allah, you know, that disposition, it's, it's prevalent in our day-to-day -day discourse. People who are so self-absorbed, so uh, uh, self-deluded by what they think they are, what they're capable. Allah is saying, listen, this whole life cycle, from the dust and the droplet of sperm to all of this, this is, was easy for me. So humble yourself. And this is a, this is a, this is a, a, a real message to all human beings. The human being needs to humble him and herself in this world. We have to stop acting like we're something of significance. We have to stop being present in this world like we own this place. No. This is, we are a creation of Allah and this is all the creation of Allah. We are a speck. Be gentle as, as in, in how you walk on this earth. That's what, that's what every space needs. Every father needs to understand that. Every mother needs to understand that. Every young child who's out there thinking that, you know, that, that they, they're the, the, the best thing after sliced bread. You know, humble yourself. There's a lot of arrogance and egotistical dispositions that have been affirmed in the public sphere. You go to college, you're, all you're told is how wonderful and amazing, and you're the future of the world. No, 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 no. Allah is the, is the, Allah is the past and the future. Allah is everything. We're these simple beings who are just taking humble steps in the divine reality, seeking Him and His rida. We need to stop these, 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 these toxic first world kind of injections of ideas that have removed God from the equation and have centered ourselves. We have to be careful about this stuff. So many of our institutions, our, Muslim, our masajid, our organizations, our national organizations, our local organizations, our, our schools, they're being suffocated by egos, destroyed by self-centeredness, people who can't get over themselves. This is what destroys. And, and, and the problem is it destroys not just in the dunya, it destroys in the akhirah. Even greater. May Allah protect us. Allah then says, Allah says, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْبَحْرَانِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتْ سَائِغٌ شَرَابُ وَهَذَا مِلْحٌ أُجَاجْ وَمِنْ كُلٍ تَأْكُلُونَ لَحْمًا طَرِيَّ وَتَسْتَخْرِجُونَ حِلِيَ تَلْبَسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ فِيهِ مَوَاخِرَ the two bodies of water. Look at all these oceans and all these bodies of water, right? Lakes, seas, oceans, ponds. These two bodies of water are not alike. Allah says one is palatable, sweet, pleasant to drink. The other salty and bitter. Yet from eat, from each, you eat fresh fish and you extract ornaments to wear. And in each you see the ships plowing their course. So that you may ask, so that you may seek Allah's bounty and be grateful. min fadli. These things were not given arbitrarily in any way, shape, or form. So that litabitahu min fadli. So that you seek His grace. tashkurun and be thankful, brothers and sisters. We have to teach ourselves, and we have to seek aid from Allah. An nakuna min ashakirin. Because a, a shakir disposition, a disposition of thankfulness, is one, a disposition of recognition, meaning that I recognize who Allah is. I recognize what Allah possesses. I recognize what Allah does. And that I'm nothing in this reality other than a, I'm a hopeful, hopeful that Allah will accept me as his humble servant. That disposition, by the way, 
will facilitate for you a pathway in life that is far more constructive, far more productive, far more meaningful. When we center Allah, you look at that prophetic community of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he and all of his companions, they were centered around Allah, the pursuit of Allah, seeking Allah, desiring Allah, giving for Allah, 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 Allah. Look at how Allah lifted them up. That's why when he said, Those who humble themselves for Allah, Allah will lift them up. And so if, if, if we have any hope in being lifted up in the sight of Allah, I'm not talking about socially, who cares? People in this dunya see us or not see us, that doesn't matter. This dunya is going to come to an end. On the day of judgment, it's not going to matter whether you were seen in 2021. Uh, irrelevant. No, Allah, we want to be lifted up in the sight of Allah. I don't, listen, none of us want to be lifted up in this dunya, but belittled in the sight of Allah. You know, given mulk, given power, control, money. There are people who 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 seethe for power and control and, and 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 money because they need to have it in their hands so that they can be and they can do. And it's gonna be a la'na. It's 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 a la'na upon them, it's a curse upon them in this life, and a certainly a curse upon them in the afterlife. These are not things to vie for. We have to, and 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 the problem and the challenge that we face in one of our real struggles, theologically and spiritually, is that these ideas are so standard in society. It's be, saturated the world we live in, right? It saturates the world we live in because the world we live in cares about the ego, the nafs, pleasure, material. This is the in in, in all permeating our spaces. And everyone is proactively, all these, many, many are proactively trying to eliminate sacred, eliminate God, eliminate, eliminate, belittle, insult, desecrate, you know, uh, uh, literally tear apart the sacred. And that's what we as Muslimin have to say, no, we live. That's the Abrahamic truth. That say that qulina salati, my prayers, and my rights, and my acts of and my rituals, and my life and my death. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. And lastly, Allah says before we take some questions, if you have some questions, please put them in the comment section. Allah says in verse number 13 of Surah Fatir, Yuliju Layla fil Nahar, wa yuliju nahara fil layl, wa sakhara shamsa wal kamara, kulun yajri li ajalim musamma, thalikumullah, thalikumullah. رَبُّكُمْ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِنْ قِطْمِيرِ He makes the night merge into the day. This profound moment that happens twice a day where the sun and the, the, the moon and the, the night and the day, they merge into one another. He has subjected the sun and the moon. Each runs for an appointed term. Such is Allah your Lord. All control belongs to him, Jalla Fiula. Al Mulku Lillah. Dominion, sovereignty, all Lillah. Malikul Mulk. Those you invoke beside him do not even control the skin of a date stone. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Brothers and sisters, we don't control anything. Presidents, kings, uh, CEOs, they don't control anything. Allah controls everything. You and I, our hope and what we pray for is that we live in this dunya with utter humility, utter humility, seeking every single day the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we seek. We Anything we do, we really have to understand its only true value is the extent to which we are conscious and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what is lifted high. الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفع. That's the reality. That's Allah أن يرفع ويتقبل ويغفر ويعفو. You know that's why we you know our prophetic teaching is to immerse ourselves in 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 seeking forgiveness in seeking pardon because the seeker the believer views him or herself as inherently deficient. 
as inherently having done, have not having not fulfilled what they're supposed to do. Prophet I said, I'm told the companions, none of you will enter heaven with your actions. They said, even you, Ya Rasulullah. They, he said, even me. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala envelops me in his mercy. That's why you have Sayyiduna Umar. Sayyiduna Umar, when he when the verses of Surah At-Tur were recited, in that the torment of Allah is, is, is affirmed and nothing can, can push it away. When this verse that really, you know, it makes your skin crawl. فَخَرَّ مَغْشِيًّا عَلَيْهِ سَيِّدُنَا عُمَرْ وَهُوَ مَنْ هُوَ He heard these verses and he, and he fell down. مَغْشِيًّا عَلَيْهِ He entered into a, a type of uh, temporary, uh, you know, he fainted. Sayyidina Umar, who, <laughs> if anyone can claim, they did a lot of righteous deeds, a lot of good things, you know, maybe he should have been uh, a bit more confident that he's fine. That, come on, he's Mubashar bil Jannah. He's he's promised heaven, but he's still scared. That's a heart that witnesses Allah. No, no, say because Sayyidina Umar did not do, or not was, or did not act, or not even hear about himself anything that for a moment made him think that he was special. It was always, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, Allah, uh, you know, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah, maj'alni khayran mimma yadhunnoon, waghfil li ma la ya'lamoon. Oh Allah, make me better than what they think of me, and forgive me, uh, me for that which they do not know. Sayyidina Umar, when he found out that Sayyidina Hudayfa was, was given the list of hypocrites, this is one of the things that Sayyidina Hudayfa was given by the Prophet the list of hypocrites in the community. Sayyidina Umar was, ran to Sayyidina Hudayfa when he found out, one of the first people to run to him say, unshiduk Allah, like I, 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 I'm asking you in front of Allah, am I amongst those who are hypocrites? <laughs> and Sayyidina Hudayfa said, of course, of course not. How could you even say that? How could you even think that? But that's how he thought. N never taking Allah for granted. Never taking anything for granted. Never taking his iman for granted. Never taking his act of worship. Always assuming that he's not doing enough for Allah and he has to do more. By the way, not in a self-deprecating way, because sometimes people do this. They say, oh, I'm a worthless being. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. I'll never amount to anything. So what's the point of me even trying? No, that's yes. That's kufr. Allah hates that. Allah hates those who are who enter into a state of despair. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about doing our best, trying our best, doing as much as we can. Not thinking that we've done even remotely sufficient, uh, 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 remotely enough of what Allah is due. And we ask Allah's acceptance and qabul and his rida. Allahumma, Allahumma arda anna. Oh Allah, accept from us and be pleased with us. Oh Allah, guide us and help us and aid us and support us. And, and accept us as your humble servants. That's what we hope. Inshallah, may Allah accept all of us as his humble servants. And may all of us be together in this month of Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. So that we can you know, seek access to the divine grace and mercy and forgiveness in ways unparalleled. Allahumma rizuqna dhalik wa balighna dhalik, ya Rabb. And may Allah make us all together with our loved ones and our family and this community and this ummah fi a'la al-'illiyin in the company of al-Habib al-Mustafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum ajma'in. Assalamu alaykum. We realize that any good deeds that we do are blessings from Allah for giving us the tawfiq to do them. But then when we miss doing something of those extra good deeds, does that mean that we are being prevented by Allah as a form of punishment? Not necessarily, no. Sometimes there may be a punishment of deprivation, um, um, meaning that Nasullah fa'ansahum and fusahum, they forgot about Allah, so Allah makes, makes them forget about themselves. So it may be the case that people are deprived because they are deserving of deprivation because of how much they have neglected or forgotten or ignored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a very different reality than um, me, for example, struggling, not having enough patience, being a little bit lazy, not getting up the way I should. That's just um, a, a, a type of test or trial that requires me to get back from it. So I, 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 I fall short, I slip up, I miss something that I do. It's not that Allah is preventing me or Allah is, you know, it's a test, it's a challenge. Okay, how are you going to react? So are you going to seek forgiveness and come back to it? Or what? So those are two different things. Nah.
بارك الله فيكم أجمعين يا رب العالمين uh, الحبيب سعيد السلام عليكم uh, How does one balance between seeing yourself as nothing but also taking pride in being a Muslim and being a shama that stands out amongst the people? Well, it's 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 one thing to be proud. It's one thing to egotistically witness yourself and self-centeredly observe yourself. It's a whole other thing to say Alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah ala anni Muslim. وَأَنَا أَفْتَخِرُ بِإِسْلَامِي I am, I am honored to be a Muslim and it's a badge of honor that my Islam not because um, Yasir, you know, <laughs> is, is a Muslim in your face no, but مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ Allah gifted me and allowed me to be a Muslim وَهَذَا شَيْءٍ أَفْتَخِرُ بِي I am honored to be that so when someone comes and says you should be ashamed of your Islam you should feel embarrassed about your Islam. You should feel emb embarrassed of your hijab or your prayer or your beard or your, your Quran or your hadith. You say, no, no, no. I will never be ashamed of this. This is what Allah has decreed. Anna, this, is, I, this is my badge of honor. If I, if I, it's, it's a badge of honor that Allah even considers me potentially amongst his servants. That's a very different disposition. So this is not to, you know, walk around and say, oh, I'm not a real Muslim. I'm a loser. I'm a bum. I'm nothing. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It's to say I try my best and it's it, it's it's an aspirational goal for me. And akuna min al-Muslimin. Allahumma tawaffani musliman, as Sayyiduna Yusuf said. Allah, Allah, allow me to die as a Muslim. Wa alhiqni bis salihin. Allow me to be with the righteous. I want to be amongst those people. It's a very different humble disposition versus say like, yeah, yeah, I'm a Muslim and you're a disbeliever and you are this, that, whatever, and I'm clearly better than you because I am this and I'm that. That's ego. That's nafs. And that does not, that's not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum, jazakallah khair. Uh, inshallah. Um, how do we relate to relatives and friends that belittle the sacred and encourage you to see faith through their lens? You be patient. That's what the whole prophetic experience was. Everyone trying to tell the prophet that he's crazy and he's backwards and he's going against society and he's going against the standards and the norms of what they knew and they understood. And the Prophet wasallam stood firm and he said, if you were to give me the entirety of the world, you put the, the sun in my right and the moon in my left, I'm not leaving this reality, right? So, you know, that's that's a part of the challenge. It's a part of the test. And you have to love your fa your fr your friends and your relatives and care for them much more than they understand what care and love means. Meaning that what they're doing is from a place of uh, not knowing, from ignorance. And they need hidayah, they need guidance. And so, you know, if they belittle the sacred, we ask Allah to forgive them and guide them and to help them, right? And to, exp you know, expand their hearts. Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, forgive my people for they know not what they're doing. Many people are doing what they're doing in abject ignorance. Now, of, of course, it's it's violence, ugly, and it's it, it can be deeply sinful. But we pray that Allah guides those people, inshallah. So just be patient and try your best. And 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 don't, you know, when whenever you find yourselves, you know, shaken, Allah says to the Prophet ﷺ in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ That we know that your, 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 your chest is tightened by what they say. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ You know, فَسَبِّحْ glorify your Lord. وَكُنْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And be amongst those who prostrate and worship your Lord until death comes to you. Meaning what? That, yeah, people are going to say hurtful things, but you center yourself around Allah. Subhanallah. You know, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Praise. Glorify your Lord in praise. وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ And enter into prostration, into surrender, into sujood. وَعْبُدْ And worship Allah until death comes. Because that's, that's, وَهَكَذَا تَسْلَمْ That's how you find your peace and your safety and your wellness in that reality. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا كَذَلِكَ How should one handle a family of young who one inclines more to ibadah and the other lackadaisical Allah's mercy yet shows the to the awam, a religious persona. These types of things, my dear sister, are things that, you know, are are, are, are some of the, 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 the trickeries of the shaitan, the inclinations of the nafs, and it requires simple things. Number one, it requires a sincerity from your part. It requires dua for them. It requires nasiha, basic advice. And the advice that is to be given is to be given with wisdom and with beautiful words. That's the simple equation. And, you know, um, don't overthink it. It's just, it's the tricks of the shaitan, the wiswas. 
It is some of the nafsani elements, people presenting this, doing that, some sincere, some insincere, all that kind of stuff. These are just, you know, different manifestations of uh, the weakness of the nafs or, you know, things of that nature. So you uh, you you make dua for them sincerely and you give them nasiha sincerely to be to to understand that in you know actions are by their intentions allah expects and wants sincerity you know those who are truly sincere in their path and so on and so forth um uh, special salam from the caribbean may allah bless you our dear sister uh, may allah bless you all and your families and all the beautiful dua that are made for me are for you as well allahumma ja'al uh, all of these adayah of, of jaza, of, of, of shukr and khayr and blessings and all of this may it be for all of us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu feekum ajma'een. Wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.